All right, Knights of Apollo, what is up, guys? Welcome back to the battlefield. We are once again playing NTW3, the mod for Napoleon Total War. And I just cannot believe how many factions they have in this game. And it's not just like your generic factions. They have some of the most nuanced and small factions in this time period, in the game. So, for example, we're in the Iberian Peninsula, and we have... The UK, Spain, and Portugal combined as one force. We have a, another army of UK and just Portugal. All right, so UK, Portugal. Uh, I believe there is another army of UK, <laughs> uh, Spain, and Portugal. And finally, we have <laughs> the Mamluks on the battlefield, which what are they doing here? I have no idea, but they're here. And I don't think I've ever seen them in action, so I'm pretty excited to see how they're going to play out. Now, on the opposing side, we have France. We have France, 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 and France. So this is just a big old French army. I don't know what France is currently doing right now, <laughs> especially this calf. Uh, having a little bit of a freak out. Uh, but they don't like what they see. And the Mamluks are going straight for him. Imagine, imagine being the French and you're, and you're in the Iberian Peninsula. Maybe you were part of the Egyptian campaign. And you're like, alright, well, at least we're in the, in the Iberian Peninsula. And then all of a sudden you see Mamluks. Like, what? <laughs> Mamluks again? Oh, they have arrows. Look at that. They're using arrows. And they're peppering down the French. I don't know why the French are retreating. The only thing I can think of is that possibly this French force, like a lot of the soldiers here cannot form square. Look how big this army is. What, are they, what is France doing? What are they doing? What is happening? Why are they just mass retreating in an ugly formation? They had to have been caught off guard. That's the only thing I can think of. But we have a massive force of French Cav coming over to um, to take on the Mamluks, which is, it's got to be pretty scary. I mean, these are the Mamluks are uh, well well trained on horseback, of course. Uh, now, the funny thing about the Mamluks is that they weren't too much of a problem for the French. You know, the square formations really uh, really uh, affected the Mamluks pretty negatively. And what I've heard is that Mamluks carry their entire wealth with them. So a lot of French soldiers became very wealthy uh, after, like, looting some of the bodies. If I'm not mistaken, I could be misremembering, but I'm fairly certain Mamluks carried their entire, like, life's wealth with them. And so when they found these horses and saddles with, like, you know, purses full of gold. Uh, yeah, that's 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 a uh, that's a good thing right there for the uh, the French um, for for the the soldiers. You know, I'm basically I'm rich. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they push they push back the Mamluks, and the French are in full on advancing backwards, as I like to say. Uh, but here's the thing, guys. Uh, remember, this is LOC. The town right here is worth four points. So, I assume the French are going to have some sort of heavy defense on this front. Uh, now, all the way over on the other side of the battlefield, we have a two-pointer. And that's it for points, I believe. I could be mistaken. Um, possibly these other... You see there's other buildings around here. Maybe these are worth like one point, but it's just not saying it. I don't know if that's the case. I think, honestly... It's only the buildings with numbers by them. So, four and two points. These are going to be the most two important uh, parts of the battlefield. And then now we have the French for forming up a nice long line of cav. And they have their lights establishing what I think. No, they're just sitting here. I thought they were going to set up stakes. Which, honestly, uh, setting up a mass amount of stakes would be pretty good oh those are arrows coming in that's just so crazy to see arrows in this time period uh so yeah they're shooting arrows and trying to kill these skirmishers from afar the, the infantry is moving forward they gotta be like what the heck arrows like <laughs> dang i wish i had some chain mail right now some metal armor 
Here we got a fight over here on this side between Cav. You can see that uh, the British Alliance is charging in and trying to counter charge, which it looks like they are going to scare off the French after losing one unit of Cav to the French. Let me go ahead and make this a little smaller. There we go. And actually, more French uh, Cav are falling back. You can see the British have kind of maneuvered around some Lancers here. Looks like we got some Spanish Lancers or Portuguese Lancers going in and trying to uh, trying to take out more of these French forces so they don't return to the battlefield. So that's actually a pretty good, pretty good engagement for the British Alliance, uh, the Peninsular Alliance, I guess I should I should call it. Uh, a nice start there, destroying a lot of the British Cav from the battlefield. And I cannot stress enough how important Cav is in this game. Uh, it really, for all Total Wars, you got to have a Cav presence. Maybe not Warhammer. I don't really know Warhammer, but in the you know the, the good Total Wars, you need to have Cav presence. If you don't, uh, tactically, you're just you're gonna struggle. And here we go. The Mamluks are moving up. They're going after the French infantry, and no surprise here, the French moved up infantry that can form square, and uh, that's that's a good thing right there because they are going to uh, fight back and do some heavy damage to these Mamluks. This building has fallen to the enemy. Very nice, very nice. Good move by the French. I, I'm glad he didn't just mindlessly send up infantry that cannot form square. That would have been disaster and uh, France really needed uh, a solid push uh, after losing so much cav at the beginning stages stages of this battle uh, but you can see the British are kind of forming up with the Mamluks it seems to me that the peninsular um, forces are concentrating all of their firepower all of their attention to the to w this one area now in terms of for the French, or like what the French are doing, it's it's tough to say because we can't see all of their forces. We can see that they've established a lot of cav in this front line, uh, probably mostly watching the Mamluks, making sure the Mamluks aren't running in and harassing their infantry. So the French cav, you know, obviously are going to be a counter to the Mamluks. We have infantry establishing a defensive perimeter with this artillery piece that's going to be setting up here. So a nice little um, firepower going on. And we do have some pretty heavy gunshots. Gunshots uh, opening. Well, the, the British, the Peninsular Alliance opening fire on the uh, the lights here. It looks like this is a light, uh, light unit. Uh-oh. General under attack. Let's go check on this. Okay, that, that must have been an artillery round getting really close to um, the Duke of Wellington. Arthur we Wellesley. Anyways. Um, uh, yeah, so... I don't know what the French are trying to do here. This seems like a suicide mission. Uh, this infantry is not going to hold. Okay, there we go. He's falling back. I assume these guys are going to get a shot and they're going to fall back. That or they might just hold here. Okay, yeah. Shot and fall back. Uh, oof. But the Peninsular Forces got a nice returning volley as they turn their backs on them. And they got some good, good hits there. Uh, back over on this side, you see the uh, the cab. This would be the right flank of the Peninsular Alliance. They've got some cab kind of running, running and looking for. I assume they were scouting or maybe looking for an opportunity. Now we see the mighty French army reorganized and pushing once again. He's got multiple layers of infantry. You don't really see this too often in NCW3. Uh, I mean. At least not to this. Usually armies are a bit more spread out than this. This is a very uh, concentrated force, which hopefully he doesn't shoot himself in the back. Sometimes you, if you have a unit like directly behind another unit, they uh, they fire at <laughs> the backs of their own guys, which is really frustrating. I wish there was a mechanic that naturally didn't do that. You know, you can turn off fire at will, but then sometimes you forget, and it's just. It's a big headache. I wish I wish Total War made the AI, the soldiers, somewhat competent in, in different situations. So there would be less focus on the silly micro and more focused on the actual tactics uh, involved in these battles. Uh, you know, just a little, like, convenient stuff. Because naturally, a soldier would not fire. I mean, it depends on the situation, but if you're just standing behind another line, and you just wouldn't fire... 
uh, into the backs of a healthy ally. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, of course, there are different situations where, you know, they, there's a confusion. Uh, maybe a unit looks like an enemy or something like that. But, you know, you get what I'm saying. Uh, but, yeah, more infantry pushing up here. So it looks like the French are going to fully engage the Peninsular Alliance. And this has got to be a little scary for the Peninsular Alliance. I mean, this is a massive, massive French force. I mean, imagine being one of these soldiers right here and seeing all those French flags and all... You probably hear the thunder of the marching headed straight towards you. And you just hope that your, your army has something... Your generals have something up their sleeves. Now we have the Mamelukes... Um, Oh, what is this? It looks like some kind of mounted rifle. They're kind of opening fire from this little hillside that's across the river. It's a nice, nice flanking position, but the French are going to maneuver some forces and try to deal with this. Let's see if they can... Oh, Mamelukes better be careful. Horses are very big targets. They're getting a little too close. The Cav, you want to be hit and run. Hit and run. You don't... Yeah. Oof. There we go. The French opening fire. Very nice on their part. Uh, we've got more French forces advancing forward. Let's get a nice bird's eye view of the uh, this battle so far. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Nice Mameluke charge. Let's hold that thought. Uh, now the 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 French do get a good volley onto the Mamelukes right before that charge, which severely weakens their morale. I just love how this flag is just flapping around in the chaos. And while they're uh, while this infantry is pinned down, the British, the Peninsular Alliance is moving forward to take on the French defense over on this side of the town. Now, remember, this is the four-pointer. Four this is an important spot, and I hope the French have uh, more units than just this defending it. Now, ooh, ooh, now the French are going in for a charge, a nice counter charge. The British right at the last second form square, but we've got other units moving in. And, yeah, it's not looking good for the French on this charge. Look at these black uniforms. It's like a dark brown with the black trim. It looks really nice. So yeah, that was a big loss for the French. I don't know what he was trying to do there. I think he was hoping to get some of the infantry off guard. Or maybe he was just bringing relief a little bit there uh, to... The French infantry that are currently holding. Look at this formation right here. Look at this. So let's go back to Birds of View and just kind of see what the heck's going on. So, oh my god, hold that thought. Huge, huge engagement. What in the world? What in the world? The French. Now, you got to be careful because there is a rule in NTW3 uh, where you can't, like... You can't like blob charge and the reason that's a rule is because of the mechanics of the game if you blob charge it's just kind of like unstoppable so it's it's frowned upon it's kind of like pushing through in Rome 2 you know it's just like it's a mechanic technically that it's not supposed to be like that you know so but this isn't I wouldn't say this is a huge blob charge it was close but the French got to be careful there uh, with the blob charging. I think they're okay, though. The French got to be careful with this entire situation. They can't focus too much on this front. And and they need to play a little bit more defensively. Look at this. They, oh, the Mamluks are going in. They're going in. They see the French are kind of unorganized. They're going to go in and try to get some of them. Yeah, they're going to make contact without getting shot at. They're behind enemy lines. And more and more Cav maneuvering around. And you can see, just this is just pure chaos. The Peninsular Alliance is going for the weak spot in the French army. I don't know, like, this army needs to spread out. This is a problem. And now we have another big charge by the Mamelukes. This is becoming a big headache for the French forces. They need to spread out their, their infantry. And they need to, oh, nice, nice square. Nice square by the French. But yeah, they need to spread out their forces and set up almost like a perimeter. They need to kind of watch multiple angles. And right now, that's just not what the French are doing. I mean, 
We have the British. Okay, this is crazy. The British pushing up infantry in the center. They're um, they're maintaining their defense, their their position here. It looks like they're gonna fall back a little bit, uh, but that's good. You want to keep the the French busy here while the center attacks, and then you close in on this side as well. This is just France is in disarray. Their their units are just not properly in position. And I'm telling you guys, this is the beauty of this game. And here comes a big bayonet charge. This is the beauty of the game where you have to position your troops properly. It's not a micro game. You know, you're not going to win by out microing the enemy. You're going to win by having superior positioning and uh, also managing the fatigue of your units. Managing, uh, you know, making sure they're not too tired. Making sure they're not exhausted because they're in the wrong position and they have to rush over to a different position to properly defend their position. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you don't... Oh. There we go, shots fired. Uh, nice, nice little volley going on there. Uh, now this has just become pure chaos. The French are complete disarray. And let this be a lesson. You've got to spread out your men. You can't have them blobbed up like this. This is a number one lesson there. Number one rule of the game. And there we go, the troops are opening fire, doing some major damage, and now uh, oh, we got a little bit of a sound issue here. Let me fix this really quick. Okay, there we go, guys. Fix the sound. Uh, so, yeah, the, the Peninsula Alliance are going to make a huge push right here because they can smell blood. They can smell blood, and they can see that the French are in utter disarray. And now the... Yes, this is smart. Smart play. Uh, we have some Cav from the Peninsula Alliance. They're going in. We've got the Mamluks kind of on the flank, just being a, a intimidating, uh, you know, uh, position. Just kind of watching over the the movement of the the French. The French are in complete disarray, <laughs> and and uh, this I've I've said that a hundred times, but I cannot believe this. I mean, this is just total chaos, and they are in full on retreat. Now, what do we have here? Okay. N wow. Who is? Is this like? Well, it's like Bavaria. Is this the Confederation of the Rhine with Bavaria? I mean, like, the, there's so many minor factions. I don't... I'm not sure, because it doesn't say. Okay, well, I... This is my first time seeing the replay. I like to watch them, you know, without really knowing what's going on. and Because it's all a surprise to me. Uh, the person who sent this in said this was against France. So I assumed it was all French armies. But... Uh, no, we've got, we've got Bavaria and the, I assume the Confederation of the Rhine, something of that nature, kind of like, um, you know, Germanic, uh, pseudo state here. Uh, but yeah, they're moving up, uh, they're joining the front, uh, the French are, well, okay, this is good, this is, <laughs> it's not over, I was like, man, this is gonna be a quick replay, I mean, just look at the utter chaos. This is just so much going on right now. We got a cab charge going into French forces right now from the Peninsula Alliance. Actually, this is, yeah, this is the Peninsula Alliance. And they are just fully just making use. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they've got their horse artillery that were able to set up very quickly. Just blasting grape shot into the French lines. They are taking advantage of of this complete chaos of this French retreat and trying to um, outshoot and outposition their enemy and that's what exactly that's exactly what they're doing I mean they have just utterly in a matter of minutes guys I've seen many replays and most of the time an army doesn't retreat this quickly that fast um, but they got to be careful they got to be careful reinforcements are here you can see uh, the Rhine forces. I'm just gonna call them the Rhine or Bavarians or whatever. They're gonna they're gonna form up and kind of watch this French um, French position. Now, when I see the movement of this army, 
I have to imagine this is a newer player. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to rank on him or anything. We'll just use kind of what he's doing here as an, as an example. And, and trust me, guys, if you've never played this mod, it is very difficult. It is not this your typical Total to War the mod. The mechanics drastically change from the vanilla. But what this player needs to do is he needs to establish a line and spread out the men a little bit. Uh, ha definitely have some reserves, but at the same time, you know, make sure you're watching the flanks. Make sure the enemy's not outflanking you. I think he's going to finally set up a front line here with these forces. Nice job uh, by the ally coming in clutch. And he's going to help basically stop the bleeding. He's going to clot up the blood here that's coming out, right? <laughs> that's bleeding out of France. He is the uh, tourniquet, I guess you could say. Uh, for the French army right now uh, just trying to slow down this advance and the British uh, you know it's got to be tough being a soldier going from oh we're pushing them back to there's a fresh line you know like dang it yeah that's that feeling of, uh, of victory to, uh, to dang it the fighting is gonna get intense again all right, so the French need to establish right here. No need to get any closer. Just establish right here. Why are they getting so close? Well, it's kind of working because the... Uh, there we go. There we go. He's setting up. He's setting up. Yeah, don't don't over-pursue. Don't get too close. You just need to put... Get your guns firing on them. You can see... Oh, this is a cool position right behind the logs. We got intense fighting for this village. This is such a tactical... Oh, my goodness. Hold on. Where is this? Oh, we've got cab presence in the back lines of the French forces. And they take out one of the French generals. This is not good for France. France is definitely struggling here against this attack. Uh, but it's not over. In this side, there's a lot of hope right here. Except for this French army. That once again is just in total chaos mode right here organize your men he's see he's got men marching through lines that are firing it's like what <laughs> it's not good not good like this is a dream like they're just blobbing up for us like this is a dream for the british the the peninsular alliance like this needs to uh this needs to stop like just formal i don't know why it's so difficult like you just could get like five units spread them out uh-oh. Okay. Uh, I don't know what France is doing here. They're going in for a massive charge. And this technically is... I don't know what's happening. <laughs> what the heck? What the heck? Why, France? So this is technically a big, a big no-no right here. And this is why the British are falling back. I think it's like you like you just can't this is a rule there's a rule against this in NTW3 you just can't blob your units in charge one it's just not it's just yeah you're just abusing the mechanics uh, but yeah they and I'm probably not explaining it well I, I am sure someone in the comments can can explain it better why this is a rule but yeah France is just going for I guess this is their counter counter attack now we do have some mamelukes going around the flank and they're gonna try to uh, soften up uh, this uh, this army over here they get a nice flank they got to deal with this mameluk push because yeah, this could be a problem a couple units of cav on the flank can uh, break a lot of infantry and there we go more and more forces are breaking we have the British charging in like a sacrificial cav unit just trying to slow down this blob and the British, I think the British are, are handling this pretty well. They're kind of kiting them down. Oh, there goes another general. Oh, no, France. I believe that was the French general not paying attention. And the Mamelukes go for them. That's huge. I mean, while France is busy. Oh, yeah, France is about to break. See, really done. Really, really well played here by the British forces. They did a great job of kind of kiting the enemy. They didn't just go, okay, you're charging everyone in. I'm going to charge everyone in. He didn't do that. And because of that, his army is surviving. The French are breaking. And this has just been utter, utter chaos 
for uh, for the French on this side. Over here, it's not looking much better. I know I've been concentrating a lot on uh, this front over here because I'm just amazed by the French movement, the French deployment and, and, and positioning, and it's just what is happening. Uh, back over on this side, the French are using the logs here as much as possible. As much as possible. And then we have a sizable force from the Peninsular Alliance that is putting pressure on the French infantry. And uh, yeah, if this any, if this has any, uh, if this is like a window into actual history of like the war in Spain, no wonder the French struggled so much. <laughs> like, this is not good. This is not good. Yeah, they're just, they're just, they're not forming a line. They need to form a line. I feel bad for this Bavarian like. Confederation of the Rhine Force here because they set up pretty well. They set up pretty well, but the French ally who was right next to him just did not do him a lot of favors. Okay. So more French forces are forming up. And now we have the British getting chased. Look at this, getting chased by the Bavarian Cav. And I think they're going for a general. Yeah, this looks like a general. But I didn't get any notification that a general has fallen. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, the French are still very confused on how to fight a war, it appears. And they are not properly setting up their lines. This is definitely better. This is definitely better than what uh, they've been doing before. Our men are running. Uh, so, if they could just, I don't know. All you have to do really is just drag and then drag. Like, <laughs> you know, left click and then right click drag. And they'll set up a nice straight line for you. Uh, but, hey, this is, uh, this is not over yet. I know the French are struggling here, but they could still come back from this. Um, keep in mind the Mamluk army is all cav. Uh, so it's not like they have a huge infantry presence. Oh, nice. Good, good firing here from the French. This is the far right fr uh, flank for the French forces. Uh, they're getting some good shots on the enemy. And the enemy is actually kind of falling back here a little bit. So that's a good little win for the French. Over on this side, we've got... Looks like some French forces went in for a bayonet charge. It did not play well for them. And we've got uh, some French forces moving up forward here from this log street uh, position. I don't know why they're moving up. I'm not really too certain about that. They're kind of giving up a, a solid position. But it looks like France on this side is on the verge of cracking. They've got the um, Peninsular Alliance kind of pushing pressure on this side. They're putting pressure on this main front here. You can see they're setting up in this creek here. Uh, the, the French have the high ground, but um, I don't think that's going to help them much here. Yeah, I don't think that's going to help them much. And, uh, yeah. That's, uh, this entire French army is breaking. And, you know, I can't blame them. I can't blame them. Uh, because if I was a, a soldier and I was witnessing the incompetence of the generals and the sub-commanders, I would be, uh, I'd be like, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> We can't even form a line, guys. We can't even form a line. Oh, man. Uh, but, yeah, we got more firing uh, going on here. So they're just opening up fire. And this uh, Confederation of the Rhine Bavarian force is doing everything in their power to maintain this front line. But it just doesn't look like they're going to hold for much longer. They need to fall back, but it appears that this is it for them. And it, <laughs> it appears that this is the end for uh, the French 
presence in Iberia. <laughs> because uh, they're just getting stomped right now. Here comes some British Cav going in for the kill. Uh, the French do form square. So what happened? What happened? What went wrong? Uh, I'd say mostly this army over here, a huge army, they just could not form a proper line. They could not protect their flanks. They charged in with a mass amount of troops, which can be effective um, if you actually face an enemy that holds their ground. But the British kind of kited them. They fell back as that big blob was advancing. They would occasionally throw a cav unit into the blob to slow them down. And with that one cav unit sacrificing their lives, the line infantry were able to just release hell upon that big blob. And it created a huge loss of morale for the, uh, the French. And now what we're witnessing is war crimes, essentially. A just massive amount of war crimes as the French are breaking, fleeing and uh yeah it's it's over this is like the total opposite of uh the last ntw battle i mean there's just the total opposite where the french and the last battle just dominated in this one it was the allies that dominated against the french forces and uh yeah we'll, don't worry guys i i hope like you guys aren't getting too far i hope you still enjoyed this i because i did and Whenever you see an army kind of get spanked, let it be like a learning lesson. Like you can learn something from it, uh, you know, what not to do in these situations. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely, we have, the thing about NTW3, I really need to upload it more because I have an unlimited amount of replays that people send in. People, there's a huge community for this game and I really want to focus on that community and, um, you know uh, upload more of these replays so i'm sure we're gonna have uh, some epic close battle replays coming out very soon don't you worry and again nonetheless i hope you enjoyed this and you learned something uh today so what not okay let's not focus on what the french did wrong here let's look at, at what the the peninsular alliance did well and i think they did a great job of extending their forces and hitting on hitting them on multiple flanks the battle started here. The British uh, did a great job of holding. I like how the um, forces, the um, the Mamluk forces, had some troops over in this tree line. They ran them around. That's the nice thing about having a cav army, the high mobility. You can really get around the army and put some pressure on the rear. So that definitely caused some, like, um, you know, army, uh, you know, positioning um issues for the french and then of course we had the other british uh peninsular alliance force kind of push way on this side and it just it was like just it, you know how you bend a stick and eventually the stick gives and it breaks that's essentially you know the bend bend but don't break but in this case they bent and broke very quickly um think of the uh the french army as a stick and when you bend it, you bend it, they were bending, they were bending, and then snap. It just, it couldn't handle the uh, the pressure coming from all different sides. And this whole, this is, this is a big reason for the defeat right here. The whole chaos of this French army just kind of, I don't know what they were doing, but it was not good. And it, it led to a uh, pretty embarrassing defeat for the French. So this one obviously is over, so we're going to fast forward and get to the end results and see how everyone did. Alright guys, um, I don't know what's going on with the end results. Um, unfortunately, we cannot see the players here. I don't know if this is normal, if anybody has experience with NTW3, is this like a thing uh, that just happens? Uh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe I have to reinstall the game. The replays look fine, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure, so I don't know what's happening with the battle results. We can't see the players, we can't see the kills, which is kind of frustrating because I really want to see how individual armies performed. This is sent in by Richard Sharp. I do want to give him a big thank you for the battle replay. Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't show your name here, but nonetheless, thank you. I appreciate the support, guys. Hope you enjoyed this battle. There'll be more NTW3 coming out soon. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time on the battlefield.